Hey everyone, this is Vaughn Vernon. Thank you for joining me today. This is my tutorial on the ports and adapters architecture. It's brought to you by my company, Kalele, and you can find us on the web at kalele.io. I've heard people complain about the ports and adapters architecture, usually referred to as hexagonal architecture. They complain that it's too complex. I really don't understand this because it's actually not complex at all. And I'm going to show you why I understand it to be quite simple, actually. And I think that the main reason that people consider it complex is because they don't understand it. They um, conflate it with several other things that could have a role in the overall system, but are not part of the ports and adapters architecture. So let me get into that right away. First thing I'm going to do is introduce this circle. Notice again, it's not a hexagon. This is focusing on the important parts of the architecture, which are ports and adapters. So uh, inside this circle, I'm going to create a port. In fact, this is known as the inside of the application. Okay, it's the inside of the architecture inside of the application. So I'm going to just make a note here that overall this is an application, which could be a microservice, it could be part of a monolith, and I'll explain all of this later. But for right now, let's just say that we have an application. You can imagine what an application is. I'm going to just mark this here. The inside is the application. And if there's an inside, there's going to be an outside, right? So you're already caught on to that, I'm sure. What is this object? This is a port and it can receive requests. The port likely represents some kind of uh, application model object. And actually there can be several different ports on the inside. I'm just going to focus on a single port right now, but there could be several other ports on the inside. Let me just get rid of those other ones and let's just focus on this one aspect right here, which is a port. What does a port do? Well, it provides behavior and data to its users. So we can imagine that we have a user out here and we're going to focus on the human user. There could be another kind of user, such as another application integrating with this application could be something like that. But for right now, let's just say that we have one human user out here and they are making requests to the port to get some behavior and data. And we have a user using some kind of device here. This could be a mobile phone. It could be um, a tablet. Uh, it could be desktop. Let's just say whatever it is we're using that the user is using a browser. It could be a, a mobile app, whatever, but we're just going to say right now that the user is using a browser and they are making requests to the port through the browser. What does that mean? Well, let's see here they are going to make an HTTP request, right? And let's say that this is a simple get request. So the user is making a get request to a port, which means that the port is going to have to provide an HTTP response to this get request. And that response will include some kind of a entity body as uh, the response. All right, so we have this port. So we're, we're looking at things very abstractly right at the moment. Uh, we don't really have a definition of the kinds of requests being made or what is this port exactly. So let me just make this a bit more concrete. Let's say that we have an e-commerce application and this will allow me to give you some more concrete examples. So this port then could be something like a catalog component. This is for now a model object. We have a model and we have a view and wait for a moment and we'll talk about some other parts of the architecture. 
But for now, we're using a catalog and an object. We're making requests against it. And this response is now going to be a number of categories. So it's a list of categories. So we have an HTTP response with categories of the catalog. The categories are the kinds of products that you can purchase through the e-commerce. This could be books as one category, clothing, housewares, who knows? It could be a number of different kinds of categories that are available through the catalog. Now, when you think about the inside of the application and this being a model object, it seems not quite fair that the catalog has to deal with uh, concerns or responsibilities such as understanding what an HTTP GET request is. So it has to, it would have to understand not only the get method, but interpret what is this path that is the path to the resource that we're getting. And it would have to know how to create an HTTP response of the categories that are available through this. And to make this even a bit more concrete, let's just say that the path here is catalog. So we request the catalog and we get back some data and part of that data at least are the categories of the catalog. Yeah, it seems like that's a lot of heavy lifting for the catalog to do when it should just be concerned with the catalog itself, with those responsibilities. So let me introduce to you another part of the architecture. And let me get things lined up here. And I'll move this down just a bit. So we've now got this inside that you're already introduced to and a bit familiar with. And because we have an inside, you can well imagine that we have an outside. And the outside is concerned with things like converting incoming technology-based requests, such as an HTTP request, to something that the catalog can understand. And what would that be? Let's just say that we have some kind of a query incoming because that's what a get is. So the catalog will need to provide some kind of a query interface and it's going to return some data. But what is this component here? What is it that's doing this adaptation? Well, you guessed it, it is an adapter. And we could say even a bit less abstractly that it is an HTTP adapter. So it knows how to adapt an HTTP request. It understands get, it understands post, put, patch, delete, and so forth. And it understands how to build responses. And the HTTP adapter then is going to adapt the HTTP request to a query, which is probably just a method invocation on a catalog object. And this is a concrete class, full implementation of a catalog model object. This is sort of the beginnings of the ports and adapters architecture on at least one side of the architecture. Now I'm gonna draw a little line here and I'm gonna split these two sides in half. And the reason for this is that there are actually two sides to this architecture. And I'll introduce another side of this. And this is where we need to have the catalog go out to some database because all catalog all of the catalog data isn't possibly cached in the catalog object itself. So we're going to have to go out to a database of some kind and get, uh, it could be a flat file actually, but let's just say that we have some kind of a database here. It could be a relational database, could be a key value store document database, whatever it happens to be. So it's, it's now the catalog that needs to go get the data that is available to it out here. But you know what? Again, just like it was not the responsibility of the catalog model object to translate an HTTP request into or adapt something, the meaning of the HTTP request into something that it can deal with here. It's also not the responsibility of the catalog to interface with this. So you can well imagine that we have another kind of object out here. And let's say that it is a database connection. And thus we could have the model object dependent on a database collect connection and the database connection would then interact with the database. That still seems a bit wrong, doesn't it? Let's start giving some things a bit more concrete names so that we can understand kind of where we are. Let's say, first of all, that this is not just an HTTP adapter. 
Yeah, it's an adapter, and this is using what's called stereotype. It comes from the UML, the Unified Modeling Language. It's just saying that this is a kind of component. So the stereotype is a kind of component known as an adapter, and it is adapting an HTTP request to something that the inside the application can understand. Okay, so the adapter then could be a catalog what? Let's say controller. I'm sure you're familiar with model view controller pattern. You can say that this is a simple controller of the model view controller pattern. Okay, so here we have this adapter. Well, this is an adapter too, isn't it? And this is where, of course, we get the name ports and adapters architecture. So we have ports and we have adapters. Now, this still looks a bit odd. Why do we have a model component that is dependent on something on the outside of the architecture? We shouldn't have that. In fact, what we actually want here is a kind of database abstraction. And the database abstraction should somehow use the database connection to reach the database. But we've still got this kind of odd uh, dependency here from the database abstraction to this connection. Let me introduce another part of, or another aspect of the architecture now. So this side of the architecture, remember I drew this line here, this side of the architecture is known as the driver side, and this side of the architecture is known as the driven side. So this port is a driver side port, and this is a driven side port. What if we were just to name this catalog, catalog repository? Ah, interesting. And our catalog repository is an interface. Okay, that's kind of making some more sense, except we wouldn't imagine that an interface, although available as a dependency to the catalog, we don't want an interface, nor can we have an interface, actually calling out to an adapter. So what is this relationship exactly? Well, we want a dependency from the database connection back to our catalog repository, and the relationship that we're going to use is one that represents an implementation of the interface, All right? So this is known, this is also a UML element. It's known as the realizes relationship, and the UML realizes relationship says that this concrete class implements the interface catalog repository. So interestingly, while this has a database connection available to it, this adapter, this could simply be the JDBC catalog repository, couldn't it? Or if we're using .NET, it could be the ADO catalog repository. It really doesn't matter. But let me provide one more change here. And rather than just calling this a database, let's give it a concrete uh, database product type. And we're going to say that this is a Postgres database, which means that we could just name this adapter the Postgres Catalog Repository. It's responsible for implementing the Catalog Repository interface in the outside, or the infrastructure, if you will. And the infrastructure is responsible for the kind of technology heavy lifting, for adapting the, the very technical parts of the architecture and the data and types that it uses to something that the inside of the application that we want to keep clean and free of very specific technologies so that we just can focus on what the business needs on the inside. All right. And this is pretty much it, what you're seeing. This is the very essence of the ports and adapters architecture. And even if we were to add more detail to this, which we will, it's just going to be a repeat of this pattern on both sides of the architecture and on the inside and on the outside and the driver's side and the driven side. So it should be quite clear. And let's take a pause now on this particular tutorial. And what I'm going to do is introduce more details in the next tutorial. Thanks for joining me today. Again, you can find out more about our company at kalele.io.